Tuvalu. Capital, Funafuti. Flag, the national flag has the Union Jack in the upper quarter nearest the hoist, nine yellow stars on a light blue field are arranged in the same pattern as Tuvalu's nine islands. Anthem, Tuvalu Mote Etua, Tuvalu for the Almighty. Monetary Unit, both the Australian dollar, A dollar, and the Tuvalia and dollar, T dollar, of 100 cents are legal tender. There are coins of 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 50 Tuvalian cents, 1 and 5 Tuvalian dollars, and notes of 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100 Australian dollars. T dollar 1 equals us dollar 0 0.76336. Or US dollar one equals T dollar one dot thirty one as of two thousand five. Weights and measures: the metric system is being introduced, but imperial measures are still commonly employed. Holidays: New Year's Day, first of January; National Children's Day, first Monday in August; Tuvalu Day, first of October; Christmas Day, twenty fifth of December; Boxing Day, twenty sixth of December. Movable holidays include Commonwealth Day, March, Queen's official birthday, June, and Prince of Wales's birthday, November. Movable religious holidays include Good Friday and Easter Monday. Time, midnight equals noon GMT. Location, size, and extent. Tuvalu, formerly the Ellis Islands, comprises a cluster of nine islands, plus islets, located in the southwestern Pacific Ocean just south of the equator. These remote atolls are situated about 1,050 kilometers, 650 miles, N of Suva, Fiji, and 4,000 kilometers, 2,500 miles, N of Sydney, Australia. They lie in a 595 kilometer long, 370 mile chain extending over some 1,300,000 square kilometers, 500,000 square miles, of ocean and have a total land area of 26 square kilometers, 10 square miles. Comparatively, the area occupied by Tuvalu is about 0.1 times the size of Washington DC. Tuvalu has a coastline of the 24 kilometers, 15 miles. Tuvalu's capital city, Funafuti is located on the island of Funafuti. Topography Tuvalu consists entirely of low-lying coral atolls, none of which is more than 5 meters, 16 feet, above sea level. Few of the atolls are more than 0.8 kilometers, half a mile, wide. The islands are coral reefs on the outer arc of ridges formed by pressure from the Central Pacific against the ancient Australian land mass. On five islands, the reefs in close sizable lagoons, the others are mere pinnacles rising abruptly from the ocean floor. Only two of the islands, Funafuti and Nukyafata, have natural harbors for ocean-going ships. There are no rivers on the islands. Climate Tuvalu has a tropical climate with little seasonal variation. The annual mean temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, is moderated by trade winds from the east. Rainfall averages over 355 centimeters, 140 in, with most rain falling between November and February. Although the islands lie north of the main cyclone belt, Funafuti was devastated in 1894, 1972, and 1990. Flora and Fauna the surrounding sea is rich in flora and fauna, but land vegetation is limited to coconut palm, pandanus, and imported fruit trees. Pigs, fowl, and dogs, all of which were imported in the 19th century, flourish on the islands. The only indigenous mammal is the Polynesian rat. Birds include reef herons, terns, and noddies. There are 22 known species of butterfly and moth. Environment Environmental dangers include uncontrolled spread of the crown of thorn starfish, which flourishes in deepened channels and is destructive to coral reefs, erosion of beachheads from the use of sand for building materials, and excessive clearance of forest undergrowth for firewood. About 40% of Funafuti is uninhabitable because the United Kingdom authorized the United States to dig an airstrip out of the coral bed during World War II. Global warming and the related rise of sea levels are also a significant environmental concern for Tuvalu's residents.
The encroachment of seawater also poses a threat of contamination to the nation's limited water supply, whose purity is already at risk due to untreated sewage and the byproducts of the mining industry and farming. Natural hazards include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic activity. According to a 2006 report issued by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources IUCN, threatened species included one species of bird, one type of reptile, five species of fish, and one type of mollusk. Current fishing methods threaten Tuvalu's marine life. The green sea turtle, hawksbill turtle, bay shark, and the leatherback turtle are endangered. Population the population of Tuvalu in 2005 was estimated by the United Nations UN, at 10,000, which placed it at number 192 in population among the 193 nations of the world. In 2005, approximately 6% of the population was over 65 years of age, with another 36% of the population under 15 years of age. According to the UN, the annual population rate of change for 2005 to 10 was expected to be less than half a percent, due to ongoing emigration. The projected population for the year 2025 was 14,000. The population density was 386 per square kilometer, 1,000 per square mile. Population is distributed among the islands as follows, Vaitiapu, approximately 15%, Nayutau, 11%, and Nanumia, 11%, with the remaining 63% divided among Nukufata, Nanumanga, Nua Nukulali, and Nyilakada, formerly uninhabited. The UN estimated that 47% of the population lived in urban areas in 2005, and that urban areas were growing at an annual rate of 2.51%. The capital city, Funafute, had a population of 6,000 in that year. Migration during the 19th century, recruitment of Tavalians to work on plantations in other Pacific Islands, Australia, and South America reduced the resident population from about 20,000 to 3,000. Migrants account for about 3% of the total population. A steady rate of emigration has resulted in little population growth over the past decade. The net migration rate was zero in 1999 and in 2005. The government views the migration levels as satisfactory. Ethnic groups Apart from a few Europeans, the islanders are almost entirely Polynesian, 96%, and have strong ties with the Samoans and Tilkalans. There is no evidence of pre-Polynesian settlement. Language and tradition indicate that the Tavalians were part of the Samoan Tongan migration from the 14th through the 17th century. Languages English and Tavalian, a Polynesian tongue related closely to Samoan, are the principal languages. A Gilbertist dialect, Kiribati, is spoken on Nua. Religions In 1865, a member of the London Missionary Society reached Tuvalu from Samoa and Samoan pastors were sent to the islands. The Tavalians rapidly embraced the Christian faith and about 91% of them are Protestant members of the Church of Tuvalu, a Congregationalist group. Seventh-day Adventists account for 3% of the population, Baha is for 3%, Jehovah's Witnesses for 2%, and Catholics for 1%. There are also small numbers of Muslims, Baptists, Mormons, and Atheists. The Constitution provides for freedom of religion and the separation of church and state, however, the government seems to favor Christian practices, even by opening sessions of Parliament with Christian prayer. Traditional chiefs from all of the nine island groups are members of the Church of Tuvalu. Religious groups are required to register with the government or and may be prosecuted for failure to do so. A group must have more than 50 members in order to register. Transportation transportation is inadequate. Most roads are little more than tracks, although Funafuti has about 19.5 kilometers, 12.1 miles, of coral-impacted roads for use by the island's few cars and trucks. Funafuti and Nukifata are the only seaports, used chiefly by freighters in the copra trade. Ships drawing up to 9 meters, 30 feet, 
Kandak in Funafuti Harbor at a deepwater wharf completed in 1980. In 2005, Tuvalu had a merchant fleet of 23 ships of 1,000 GRT or more, totaling 54,993 GRT. All the islands are served by Tuvalu's one inter-island ferry. As of 2004, Funafuti had one lone airport, a grass strip that cannot be used for jet aircraft. History The islands were probably settled between the 14th and 17th centuries by Polynesians drifting west with prevailing winds from Samoa and other large islands. The first European to discover Tuvalu is thought to have been the Spanish navigator Slavoro de Menda Adenera who sighted Nui in 1568 and Nyilakada in 1595. Further European contact was not made until the end of the 18th century. Between 1850 and 1875, the islands were raided by ships forcibly recruiting plantation workers for South America, Fiji, Hawaii, Tahiti, and Queensland. To help suppress such abuses, the Office of British High Commissioner for the Western Pacific was created in 1877. In 1892, after ascertaining the inhabitants' wishes, the United Kingdom proclaimed the Ellis Islands, as Tuvalu was then known, together with the Gilberts, as a British protectorate. After further consultation, the protectorate became the Gilbert and Ellis Islands colony in 1916. After the Japanese occupied the Gilberts in 1942, U.S. forces occupied the Ellis Group in 1943 and drove the Japanese out of the Gilberts. After the war, the ethnic differences between the Micronesians of the Gilberts and the Polynesians of the Ellis Islands led the Ellis Islanders to demand separation. In 1973, a British commissioner appointed to examine the situation recommended administrative separation of the two island groups. The British government agreed, provided that the Ellis Islanders declared their wishes by referendum. The vote, held during August to September 1974 with UN observers in attendance, produced an overwhelming majority of 3,799 to 293 for separation. Accordingly, on October 1, 1975, the Ellis Islands were established as the separate British colony of Tuvalu, and a ministerial system was instituted. Pursuant to a constitutional conference held at London in February 1978, Tuvalu became an independent member of the Commonwealth of Nations on October 1, 1979. Sir Fai Ta Penedilateo became Tuvalu's first Governor General, and Ta Ari Pidlati, Chief Minister at the time of independence, took office as Tuvalu's first Prime Minister. Following new elections in September 1981, Tomasi Puapua, who was re elected in September 1985, succeeded Lati in office. In March 1986, Tupua Lupina replaced Sir Fita Penadilateo as Governor General. In the poll held that same year, Tavalians rejected the idea that Tuvalu should become a republic. As a result of the 1989 general election the parliament elected Bike Nabupinu as Prime Minister in September 1989. In the same election, Nama Latasi became the first woman to serve in Tuvalu's parliament. In the 1993 legislative elections Pinu and Puapua, the man who he replaced as Prime Minister, each received six votes from the newly elected 12-member parliament. A second round of votes were held in December that year, from which Puapua withdrew, and Kamuta Latasi was elected Prime Minister. In 1994 Latasi spearheaded a movement to remove the British Union Jack from the country's flag as a symbolic gesture of independence. In 1995, after conservative French President Jacques Chirac announced his country's intention to conduct above-ground nuclear tests in the South Pacific, Tuvalu emerged as a regional leader in the highly vocal law opposition. In April 1997 the Union Jack was restored as part of Tuvalu's national flag by a vote of 7 to 5 in the parliament. Newly re-elected Prime Minister Baik Nabupini U restored the former flag design which Latasi had changed without consideration of the views of Tuvalu's citizens. Tuvalu, Nauru, and Kiribati aligned with the Cook Islands on Niue to put pressure on Australian production of greenhouse gases. These low-lying island nations are particularly vulnerable to future global warming.
already flooding in stormy weather, they pressed for a worldwide cut of 20% of 1990 emission levels by 2005. Australia rejected the proposal, citing 90,000 jobs would be lost if Australia was forced to reduce emissions. None of Tuvalu's islands rise more than 16 feet, 5 meters, above sea level, and their future existence may be imperiled. In 1998 Tuvalu began selling internet addresses in its TV domain, that is, all Tuvalia and internet addresses armed with the letters TV. By April 1999 there was growing dissatisfaction with Prime Minister Piniu's leadership. Piniu was forced to give up his office after a no-confidence vote of parliament. On April 27, 1999 Ionatan Ionatana, former Minister of Education, was elected as Prime Minister by the 12-member parliament. In August 1999 Tuvalu sought economic aid as it suffered through a severe drought. Australia, New Zealand, Japan and Britain promised assistance to ease the water shortage with desalination plants. Japan agreed to provide their plants, New Zealand would pay to transport them. Australia would provide technical assistance toward formulating water policies. Reportedly, Tuvalu licensed its .tv domain for a dollar fifty million over 10 years to an internet incubator. In February 2000 Prime Minister Iona Tanner received the first installment of the licensing deal, US$20 million, and invested it in trust funds. In the continuing dispute with Britain over Tuvalu and separation with the Gilberts, Kiribati, Iona Tanner suggested that Tuvalu become a republic. In 2000 Tuvalu was admitted to the United Nations. On December 9, 2000, Iona Tanner collapsed from cardiac arrest and died. Tuvalu had four prime ministers from 2000 to 2002. Fimala Galuka, who was elected prime minister in February 2001, was replaced by Koloa Tuleke in December 2001 after a vote of no confidence. Safat Sopoanga became prime minister in August 2002 after general elections were held on 25th of July. The elections and appointment of Sopoanga were expected to herald a period of stability in Tuvalu after Iona Tana's death. However, Sopoanga's majority was by one seat. When the seat of Nanumia was declared vacant after the Chief Justice ruled that a government member of Parliament had lodged his nomination papers after the legal deadline and the second seat held by the government became vacant following the death of the parliamentary speaker, a by-election was called. After the by-election Sopoanga did not have a majority. Sopoanga was defeated 8 to 6 in the 15-seat parliament, with one absentee. His defeat resulted mainly from Parliament Speaker Rotin Alutasi's joining the opposition camp because of his disagreement with Sopoanga's financial policies. Following this no-confidence vote on August 25, 2004, Safat Sopoanga resigned his parliamentary seat on August 27, 2004. Deputy Prime Minister Mashadulfa succeeded Sopoanga in an acting capacity on August 27, 2004. After having earlier resigned as Prime Minister, Sopoanga won the by election on Nukafata. He did not seek re election for Prime Minister, but supported Tofa. Tofa was confirmed as Tuvalu's ninth Prime Minister in a parliamentary election, 8 to 7 vote, on October 11, 2004. He is the first Prime Minister of Tuvalu to hail from the island of Nanumia, the most northern of the group. In June 2005, Tofa lost one of his key allies with the resignation of Sayopata for medical reasons. Government Tuvalu is an independent constitutional monarchy. The head of state is the British monarch, whose representative on the islands is the Governor-General, a Tuvalian who has the power to convene and dissolve Parliament, Filoy Miatalito since April 15, 2005, there is a unicameral legislature, or Fel Ifano, the House of Assembly, with 15 members elected to four-year terms by universal adult suffrage. Seven islands elect two members each and one island elects one member. The Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister are elected by and from the members of Parliament. The Cabinet is headed by the Prime Minister and has up to five ministers, all House members. Suffrage is 18 years of age. An election for Prime Minister was last held October 11, 2004.
The next was to be held following parliamentary elections in 2006. Political Parties There are no political parties, and political life and elections are dominated by personalities. Small island constituencies with a few hundred kin-related electors judge the leaders by their service to the community. Local Government Local administration by elected island councils was established following the creation of the Protectorate in 1892. Local governments were established on the eight inhabited islands by a 1966 ordinance that providing the framework for a policy aimed at financing local services at the island level. Funafuti's town council and the other seven island councils each consist of six elected members, including a president. Under the Fall Act of 1997, increasing power devolved from the central government to the island councils. Judicial System District magistrates were established with the Protectorate in 1892, and native courts have observed a simple code of law based on mission legislation and traditional councils. Eight island courts, with limited jurisdiction, were constituted in 1965 to deal with land disputes, among other local matters. In 1975 a High Court of Justice was set up to hear appeals from district courts. Appeals from the High Court may go to the Court of Appeals in Fiji and ultimately to the UK Privy Council in London. In the High Court a Chief Justice visits twice a year to preside over its sessions. The right to a fair public trial is respected in practice. Services of the public defender are available to all to value and free of charge. Defendants have the right to confront witnesses, present evidence, and to appeal. The judiciary is independent and free of governmental interference. Armed Forces Tuvalu has no armed forces except for the local police, which includes a maritime surveillance unit. For defence the islands rely on Australian trained volunteers from Fiji and Papua and New Guinea. International Cooperation Tuvalu became a member of the Commonwealth of Nations on September 1, 2000, and the 189th member of the United Nations on September 5, 2000. Tuvalu serves on the FAO, IMO, ITU, UNCTAD, UNESCO, APU, and the WHO. The country is also part of the Asian Development Bank, the ACP Group, the South Pacific Regional Trade and Economic Cooperation Agreement, Spartica, the Alliance of Small Island States, ASIS, and the Pacific Island Forum, formerly called the South Pacific Forum. In 1979, Tuvalu signed a Treaty of Friendship with the United States, which in 1983 formally dropped its prior claim to four of the nine islands. Tuvalu opposes French nuclear testing in the South Pacific and signed the 1985 Rarotonga Agreement declaring the region a nuclear weapons free zone. In environmental cooperation, Tuvalu is part of the Kyoto Protocol, the Montreal Protocol, MARPAL, and the UN Conventions on the Law of the Sea, Climate Change, and Desertification. Economy Prime Minister Tauri Pilati noted at the time of independence, 1979, that all Tuvalu has is sun and a portion of the Pacific. Economic life is simple, but there is no extreme poverty. Subsistence is based on intensive use of limited resources, namely coconuts and fish, copper is the only cash crop. The sale of stamps and coins and worker remittances were the primary sources of government revenue in the mid-2000s. About 1,000 Tuvaluans work in Nauru in the phosphate mining industry. The islands are too small and too remote for development of a tourist industry. Fewer than 1,000 visitors visit the island annually, most attached to international aid delegations. However, the largest export sector is tourism, which in 2003 accounted for 34.8% of total exports of goods and services. Its vulnerability to external shocks includes the real possibility that the nine low-lying coral islands that constitute the country could disappear beneath a rising ocean level as one of the effects of global warming. Already, thousands in this rather densely populated country have been displaced by ocean-swamping parts of the land. In the meantime, the economy has been kept afloat by two more fortunate developments, the success of the Tuvalu Trust Fund. TTF, and proceeds from the sale of Tuvalu's internet address. TV. 
The trust fund was set up in 1987 with $1.27 million derived from contributions from Tuvalu, Australia, the largest donor at $8.8 million, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, with smaller grants from Japan and South Korea. Helped by occasional lump sum contributions from Australia, and modest withdrawals by Tuvalu, the TTF had grown to $1.37 million by 1999. The TTF was valued at more than $1.70 million in 2006. The government derives about one-fourth of its revenues from returns on trust fund investments. More unique are the profits the government has been able to derive from its internet domain name. In 1990, the government leased the right to the suffix TV to Idealab, a California company, for $1.90 million over 12 years, retaining a 20% share in the TV corporation. Some of the funds generated have been put in other investments and some have been used for infrastructure projects like airport development, electrification, and the construction of roads, office buildings and hospitals. The corporation TV became a major shareholder in Air Fiji, which has exclusive flying rights to Tuvalu. In January 2002, TV Corporation became a wholly owned subsidiary of Verisign Corporation, which bought it for us $45 million in an agreement by which Tuvalu maintains control of the management of its domain name. Returns from TV Corporation have been highly variable. The United Nations ranks Tuvalu among the least developed countries. Income. The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency CIA, reports that in 2005 Tuvalu's gross domestic product GDP, was estimated at US$12.2 million. The CIA defines GDP as the value of all final goods and services produced within a nation in a given year and computed on the basis of purchasing power parity. PPP, rather than value as measured on the basis of the rate of exchange based on current dollars. The per capita GDP was estimated at US$1,100. The annual growth rate of GDP was estimated at 3%. The average inflation rate in 2000 was 5%. Labor The estimated workforce numbered 7,000 in 2001. The economy relies primarily on subsistence ventures including fishing and gathering coconuts. Many laborers work abroad and send wages home. In Funafute, the government-controlled Philately Bureau is the largest single employer, with a staff of several dozen workers. There is no data on Tuvalu's unemployment rate. The nation's only trade union, the Tuvalu Seamen's Union, has about 600 members who work abroad on foreign merchant vessels. The nearly 1,000 public employees in Tuvalu were not unionized as of 2002, but do belong to associations. The law protects the right to strike, but no strike has ever occurred. The minimum working age is 14, 15 for industrial employment. Generally children do not work outside of the traditional economy. The minimum age for shipboard employment is 18. As of 2002, the bi-weekly minimum wage was US$ $75.66. The law sets the workday at 8 hours. Basic health and safety standards, such as clean drinking water, are mandated by law but irregularly enforced. Agriculture Although agriculture is the principal occupation, it contributes only 26% to the GDP. Agriculture is limited because of poor soil quality, sand and rock fragments, uncertain rains, and primitive catchment. Coconuts form the basis of both subsistence and cash cropping. The coconut yield in 2004 was about 1,600 tons. Other food crops are pulaka, taro, pandanus fruit, bananas, and papayas. Animal Husbandry The Agricultural Division, based on Vaitiapu, has attempted to improve the quality and quantity of livestock to lessen the island's dependency on imports. Pigs and fowl, which were imported in the 19th century, have been supplanted by goats and rabbits. In 2005, there were some 45,000 chickens and 13,500 pigs on the islands. Honey is also produced. Fishing Sea fishing, especially for tuna and turtle, is excellent. Although fishing is mainly a subsistence occupation, fish is sold in the capital, 
and best of mare is exported. The fish catch in 2003 was 1,505 tons, up from around 500 tons annually between 1997 and 2001. Japanese aid in 1982 provided a commercial fishing vessel for the islands. The Republic of Korea and Taiwan are both licensed to fish within the territorial waters of Tuvalu. In October 1986, Tuvalu, along with several other Pacific Island nations, signed an agreement with the United States giving U.S. tuna boats the right to fish its offshore waters. The sale of fishing licenses annually contributes about $80,000 to the government's revenues. Fishery exports amounted to US$301,000 in 2003. Forestry There is little useful timber on the islands. Mining There was no commercial mining. Energy and power International aid by UNDP and the European Development Fund is helping to develop electrical power. Funafuti has a limited amount of electricity to operate its meteorological and broadcasting stations and for use by the hospital and hotel, very few private households have electrical service. Installed electrical capacity totaled 2,600 kilowatts in 1990. Both production and consumption of electricity amounted to 3 million kilowatt hours, or 330 kilowatt hours per capita, in 1995. The Tuvalu Solar Electric Cooperative Society, formed in 1984, provides a limited supply of photovoltaic electricity. Industry There is no industry apart from handicrafts, baking, and small-scale construction. The islands lack the population, capital, and resources to make commercial enterprises cost-effective. In 1995, the latest year for which data was available, manufacturing accounted for 3% of GDP and construction about 14%. With the utilities sector, industry accounted for 19% of GDP. In recent years, construction has particularly benefited from the windfalls of money the government has through the TV corporation and related ventures. Science and Technology there is no advanced science and technology except for that imported under foreign aid programs. Domestic Trade The local economy is based primarily on agriculture, which employs a majority of the resident population. Most residents of smaller villages and islands can grow or create their own necessary goods. Barter remains an important part of the subsistence economy. In larger communities, cooperative societies dominate commercial life controlling almost all retail outlets, the marketing of local handicrafts, and the supply of fish to the capital. Offices are open from 7.30 a.m. to 4.15 p.m., Monday through Thursday, and from 7.30 a.m. until 12.45 p.m. on Friday. Foreign Trade Copra, the main cash crop, took many years to recover from the 1972 hurricane and has been affected by fluctuating market prices although there is a subsidy to producers. Other exports include handicrafts and postage stamps. Most food, fuel, and manufactured goods are imported. Tuvalu's principal export partners in 2004 were, Germany, 56.5%, Fiji, 14.3%, Italy, 10.9%, the United Kingdom, 7.7%, and Poland, 4.9%. The principal import partners in 2004 were, Fiji, 50.2%, Japan, 18.1%, Australia, 9.6%, China, 8%, and New Zealand, 5.5%. Balance of Payments In 2004, Tuvalu's exports were valued at an estimated US$1 million, while imports were valued at US$31 million. Tuvalu's main economic aid donors are Australia, Japan, and the United States. Official Development Assistance, ODA, net inflows amounted to US$8 million in 2004. Banking and Securities The Bank of Tuvalu was founded in Funafuti in 1980 and has branches on all the islands. The bank is jointly owned by the Tuvalu government, 75%, and by Barclays Bank, which was responsible for its operation until mid-1985. 
In 1995, the government bought Westpac's 40% shareholding in the National Bank of Tuvalu and now owns the bank outright. Westpac has managed the bank since it was established in 1980 and is expected to provide an advisory support service. Insurance Insurance plays a minimal role in Tuvalu and life. Public Finance The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency CIA, estimated that in 2000 Tuvalu's central government took in revenues of approximately US$22.5 million and had expenditures of US$11.2 million. Revenues minus expenditures totaled approximately US$11.3 million. Taxation Revenue is obtained principally by means of indirect taxation, stamp sales, the Capra export tax, fishing licenses, telephone line leasing, earnings from the Tuvalu Trust Fund, and profits from TV Corporation, the enterprise set up in 1990 through a leasing arrangement with Idea Lab, a California corporation, to market the country's internet address. TV The personal income tax rate on chargeable income is 30%. The company income tax rate on chargeable income is also 30%, down from 40%. The income of both non-residents and foreign resident companies is taxed at a flat rate of 40%. There are a variety of sales taxes applied to a variety of goods and services. Island councils also levy a head tax and a land tax based on territorial extent and soil fertility. Customs and Duties since a single-line tariff was implemented on January 1, 1975, trade preferences are no longer granted to imports from Commonwealth countries. Tariffs, applying mostly to private imports, are levied as a source of revenue. Most duties are ad valorem, with specific duties on alcoholic beverages, tobacco, certain chemicals, petroleum, cinematographic film, and some other goods. Foreign Investment the cash economy is not sufficiently developed to attract substantial foreign investment. In 1981, the government established the Business Development Advisory Board to promote local and foreign investment in the Tuvalu economy. In 1993, the board became the Development Bank of Tuvalu, the country's only commercial bank. UNCTAD reported that the annual flow of foreign direct investment FDI, to Tuvalu for 1997 and 1998 was no more than a dollar 100 comma oh, 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 zero for 1999, a dollar 100 comma oh, 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 in 2000, and zero again in 2001. In 2004, net FDI inflow amounted to a dollar 8.5 million. More important, eight the government's returns on its outward investments through the Tuvalu Trust Fund (TTF) and the. TV Corporation, returns on which are used to meet government expenses and invest on infrastructural development, lessening dependence on external aid. Profits from the TV Corporation, for instance, were used to pay the country's UN dues, build a school and improve roads. The TTF is the leading source of revenue, regularly supplying about one-fourth of the government's budget, and is reported to have increased from its original A$27 million capitalization in 1987 to over A$70 million in 2006. Economic Development Development aid, which rose rapidly during the 1960s, peaked at independence in 1979, when the United Kingdom undertook to provide £6 million. The Tuvalu Trust Fund TTF, was established in 1987 with $1.27 million. The fund receives contributions from Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Japan, Korea, and Tuvalu itself. The net income is paid to the Tuvalu government annually. As of 2006, the fund amounted to more than a dollar seventy million. In 1990, the government discovered a very profitable, if variable, source of income in leasing its internet domain address (TV) to a California company, Idea Lab, and then retaining a 20% share in TV Corporation that was established to market the suffix. Besides direct lease payments and dividends from its operations, the country stands to gain profits from other enterprises in which the corporation invests. The corporation, TV, owns a major share, 
for instance, of Air Fiji which has exclusive rights on flights to Tuvalu. Unlike the prudently managed TTF, however, income from TV Corporation is highly variable, presenting potential problems for rational budgeting. Due mainly to income received by from Tuvalu fishermen working for non-Tuvalu operations, the country GNPs is considerably higher than its GDP. Fishing and telecommunications license fees are an increasingly important source of government revenue, as are remittances from workers overseas, official transfers, and revenue from overseas investments. In 2002, the government announced the Island Development Program IDP, designed to reduce the disparity between household income on the main island, Funafute, and the outer islands, and thereby slow the migration to the capital city. The program centers around the creation of a trust fund, the Fala Campuel Trust Fund FTF, modeled on the successful TFF. The FTF was capitalized at $8.2 million, contributed by the government and donor countries, principally New Zealand and Australia. Four types of policies are to be followed to achieve IDP goals, 1. Decentralization of administration, 2. Improvement of public service delivery, 3. Promotion of small business development, and 4. A sustained augmentation of money available for the IDP through the prudent management of the FDF. In the first distribution of earnings from the FTF, the island councils were each given us $318,000 for development projects, and us $104,000 was allocated to a buffer account. All development efforts in Tuvalu are overshadowed by the real possibility that an increase in global warming that ends up raising normal sea level could mean the disappearance altogether of the nine low-lying coral islands that constitute the country. The government has consequently pushed hard on two fronts, urging industrialized countries to ratify and adhere to the Kyoto Protocol on limiting greenhouse gases, and, in other countries, particularly, Australia, to have a plan for accepting displaced Tuvaluans. Social Development Tuvaluans cling strongly to their traditional way of life. Villages are organized on a communal rather than a clan basis and have a customary system of social welfare. Young men's clubs and women's committees are standard features of social life, concerning themselves with sailing, fishing, crafts, and child welfare. Women generally play a subordinate role within the family and society at large. Working women are primarily concentrated in the education and health sectors. Violence against women and domestic abuse are not widespread problems. Children's welfare is protected and free medical care is provided until 18 years of age. Human rights are well respected in Tuvalu. Serious crime is virtually non-existent, and most prisoners are held for one night for offenses such as public drunkenness. Health There are no serious tropical diseases on the islands except for a dwindling number of leprosy and dysentery cases. In 2004, there were an estimated 57 physicians, 277 nurses, 96 midwives, and 19 dentists per 100,000 people. Approximately 85% of the population had access to sanitation, and the entire population had access to safe water. The infant mortality rate was estimated at 20.03 per 1,000 live births in 2005. In the same year, the fertility rate was an estimated 3.1 per 1,000 people. As of 2002, the crude birth rate and overall mortality rate were estimated at, respectively, 21.4 and 7.5 per 1,000 people. Immunization rates for a child under 1 were as follows, diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus, 82%, polio, 92%, measles, 94%, and tuberculosis, 88%. About 49% of the children under 1 had been immunized for hepatitis B. The average life expectancy was estimated at 68.01 years. Malaria was one of the most reported diseases. Housing Most islanders live in small villages and provide their own housing from local materials. After the 1972 hurricane, Funafuti was rebuilt with imported permanent materials, but there is still a critical housing shortage on Funafuti and Vaiyapu. Government-built housing is largely limited to that provided for civil servants. 
At the 2002 census, the housing stock stood at about 1,568 houses. About 640 houses, or 40% of the housing stock, are on Funafuti. Nyilakata only reported 8 houses at the census. About 74% of all houses are single-family permanent structures. These are made of wood or concrete or both. A little over 17% of all homes are of traditional construction, primarily with thatch and mud walls and thatched or iron-sheeted roofs. About 22% of the housing stock was between 21 and 50 years old. Another 26% was between 11 and 20 years old. Only about 30% of all houses had an indoor flush toilet. About 89% of all households had kerosene stoves for cooking. Only 40 households had microwave ovens. Education All children receive free primary education from the age of 7. Education is compulsory for 10 years. The Tavalyan school system has 7 years of primary and 6 years of secondary education. Secondary education is providing at Matafuwa, a former church school on Vaitipu now jointly administered by the government. In 2004, there were 2,010 students enrolled in primary schools with a student-teacher ratio of about 24 to 1. The same year, there were about 446 students enrolled in secondary schools with a student-teacher ration of 11 to 1. Tuvalu Marine School was opened in 1979 with Australian aid. In the same year, the University of the South Pacific, Fiji, established an extension center at Fundafuti. The Tuvalu Technical Education Center offers a technical and vocational training for adults. Libraries and Museums The first book published in Tuvalu was the Bible, in 1977. The National Library and Archives of Tuvalu is located on Funafute, documents from parliamentary proceedings are collected there. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning maintains a small depository library for the Asian Development Bank. Media In 2002, there were 700 mainline telephones in use nationwide. As of 2004, there were no registered mobile phone subscribers. The government-owned Tuvalu Broadcasting Service, on Funafute, transmits daily in Tuvaluan and also broadcasts news in English. The only radio station in the country was converted from government-owned to public corporation status in the form of the Tuvalu Media Corporation in 2001. According to the Charter, the Secretary to Government serves as the Chairman of the Board, and the Prime Minister's duties include oversight of the TMC. There is no national television station, but some islanders own satellite dishes to receive foreign broadcasts. Internet access is available through the management of the Office of the Prime Minister and the Department of Telecommunications. In 2002, there were about 1,300 internet users. There is no commercial press, but Tuvalu Echoes, 2002 circulation, 250, is published bi-weekly by the government. Other local publications are produced by the churches or the government. The government is reported to respect freedom of speech and of the press. Organizations Apart from cooperative societies and local traditional bodies connected with island councils, there are few organizations. Organized youth groups include the Boys Brigade, the Tuvalu Youth Fellowship and Pathfinder, and Girl Guide and Boy Scout troops. The Tuvalu Amateur Sports Association and the Pacific Red Cross are also notable. The Tuvalu Association of Non-Governmental Organizations is an umbrella group that provides a network for several religious organizations and some political and human rights advocacy groups. The National Council of Women of Tuvalu serves as an umbrella organization for women's cooperatives. Tourism, Travel, and Recreation Tuvalu's remoteness has discouraged tourism, the few visitors are on commercial or official business. The many atolls, flora and fauna, and the World War II remains are the primary attractions of the islands. In 2003, about 1,300 tourists visited Tuvalu, half of the visitors were there on business. A valid passport, onward, return ticket and proof of sufficient funds are required to enter Tuvalu. Visitor permits are issued upon arrival and are valid for up to three months. Famous Tavalians 
Tuvalu's first Prime Minister was Ta'ari Piblati, B. Papua New Guinea, 1928. He later became Governor General of Tuvalu. Sir Tomasi Puapua, B. 1938, was Prime Minister from 1981 to 89, and the Governor General from 1998 to 2003. Fimala Galuka, 1940-2005, was Governor General, 2003-05, and Prime Minister of Tuvalu, 2001. Dependencies Tuvalu has no territories or colonies.